Hey, hey pals. Welcome to Frame and Fiber. This is a chat and vlog style YouTube channel all about adventures and hand making. Um, I am Paige Miller, your host, and I am so glad you made your way here. If you would like to stay connected with me and join in the fun here at Frame and Fiber, uh, please click the subscribe button and also that notification bell. Uh, Frame and Fiber is my local picture framing and yarn shop in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. So if you ever find yourself at the Jersey Shore, pop on in. I'd love to meet you. So today is Sunday. I'm recording late in the day. <laughs> so I have a hard shadow here, which is, not, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I keep forgetting in the past several videos to say what episode we're on. I have no idea why it keeps popping or not sticking in my head. So this is episode 44. It's pretty cool. Um, oh, sorry, sticking to the chair here. <laughs> <laughs> I had to close the windows so all of the traffic and people outside wouldn't be too loud so it's a little warm in here. All right so where to begin? I think we should start with how about we talk about a little bit of a recap of the time I had at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival last weekend. So I drove up to the sheep show with Liz and Dee, two fabulous ladies who I love spending time with. Liz is one half of the Cocktail Hour at the Coop podcast, so it was a blast to be with them. Uh, and Liz's little ones, her boys are so cute. So it was a great time. We had such a good time. The weather was perfect. Uh, I got to walk around, so I was supposed to bend this year and I ended up having to not bend, say lovey. Um, but that's okay because I got to walk around and see the sights and there were lots to see. This year it just seems like the festival had a whole lot more to offer, some really cool vendors, so I had a great time. Uh, two vendors that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Okay, so first up is Gage Hill Craft. So I was just walking around, seeing the sights, moseying around by myself. I had, at this point, lost Liz and Dee. <laughs> there were so many of you who I got to meet and reconnect with. Um, I did not expect to see so many of you, so that was really cool. Um, I would love to name all of you, but there really were that many people um, who I got to run into. So no names, but lots of love and thank yous to... Um, several of you who had sweet little gifts for me that was so kind so thank you so much it was lovely to meet you guys um so gauge health crafts uh let's see do i have her logo yes right here so this is gauge hill it's not a pretty logo so here on youtube you can check out gauge hill crafts i plan on Let's see, I don't know when I'm going to have time to sit in the next week and a half to two weeks, but as soon as I have a Sunday afternoon alone, I plan on watching lots of Sarah's videos. Uh, she highlights a lot of Vermont makers and farmers, crafters, um, really interesting, interesting lady. I didn't meet her husband, so it's, so it's Gage Hill Crafts, it's Sarah and Rick. Scully and they she was pretty cool we only talked for about five minutes and I could have monopolized her time for sure but she was vending <laughs> uh, so she's pretty cool um, they have she is let me get this right I want to say this right uh, she so they own Gage Hill Crafts and she also owns or runs or yeah, owns uh, Vermont Natural Sheepskins. She is the first and one of the only natural tanneries in the United States. Uh, she tans and processes the sheep fleece and skin all natural. So it's very labor intensive, very time consuming, but uh, if you're looking for something that's completely natural, you should definitely check out Vermont Natural Sheepskins. Uh, she had all kinds of cool things to, I mean, just within the, like I said, the first five minutes, like just telling me about 
a little bit about what they do and why they do what they do, you can definitely check out gagehillcrafts.com uh, and read their blogs blog posts I should say. So I'm going to just show you the two things that I bought. There's so many cool things. Uh, Sarah has a lot of patterns too. So knitters, go check her patterns out. So I bought this. Tea lights that are made with beeswax and they're just, ver so it's Vermont sourced beeswax and that's it. It. there's nothing extra oops hide my face there's nothing in here except for beeswax so that was cool her mom makes those and then she has a whole line of lotion creams and lotion bars I bought the cream because I'm probably gonna use this on my face um, okay ingredients grass-fed tallow and lard if you don't know what that is, you need to investigate. Uh, hemp seed oil, essential oil of carrot seed and geranium. The light is so hard, there we go. Carrot and geranium. Uh, this is amazing. I've never smelled carrot nor geranium. And together, really clean and earthy. So. Did you know that, I didn't know this, Sarah was telling me this, that the skin of a pig or a hog is very, very similar to the skin of a human? And that natural made creams that are made with lard and tallow are better for us because they seep into us. Um, the chemistry matches. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so it's not vegan, so if you're vegan, you will not be interested in it. <laughs> However, that might be said, um, on the other end of that spectrum is all of the ingredients that she uses are Vermont sourced. So she is all about as low of a carbon footprint as possible. So check her out, really cool stuff, Gage Hill Crafts. And I'll let you know, I'm gonna watch her podcast soon, so <laughs> maybe you guys will watch it with me. All right, then the next crafter that I wanted to talk to you about was Green Goat Ranch. So another Sarah. I knew that I wanted to buy some fiber for spinning since if you watched my last episode, you will have seen my Nano. <laughs> uh, so I went to her booth. It is, there's her logo, Green Goat Ranch. And I bought these Rolex. So that's the first set of colors. It's like a periwinkle blue and a mustardy. Maybe not so mustardy. Between mustard and pumpkin. And then a really cool mix of like a mauvey color gray and that pumpkin mixed together. And then the other colors I got was, again, a periwinkle blue, a mustardy yellow, and then a navy. Uh, I don't want to take, I already, I packaged them up in their plastic, so I don't want to take them out. Um, you never know, I may use one of these as a giveaway, or I may keep it for myself, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, she was so sweet. So Sarah is the shepherdess. If you check out greengoatranch.com and read all about her, uh, what she does there, She's pretty cool. So she lists each one of her sheep and you can actually click on the sheep and buy fiber directly from the sheep. So I thought that was pretty cool. She tells you about um, their personality and just, it's pretty cool. You should definitely check them out. Sarah at Green Goat Ranch. Um, she sells yarn and roving and Rolex and mini bats. I don't know the difference between a bat and roving. I will eventually figure it out, but <laughs> go look her up. She's also on Instagram at Green Goat Ranch. I think so is Gage Hill. So yes, just wanted to share two new makers to me. Uh, I thought they were really cool women. They were pretty like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want to say inspirational because I feel like that's just like, what, what does that even mean anymore? Um, they're legit. <laughs> legit. I don't even know what that means either. 
they're just pretty cool ladies who I found really interesting who are passionate about what they do and you can see it in everything that they had to offer so yes check them out um, oh also you can see that I'm wearing my most awesome earrings can you see them yeah you can see them these are uh, earrings crocheted earrings actually let me take it out because you instead of looking at my weird face <laughs> So can I get that to focus? Yes, we can. Okay, so that is a crocheted earring. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, this is made by Yasmin and her business is called Designs by Yasmin. You can find her on Instagram and Etsy. She has really cool earrings in her shop. If you follow her on Etsy, you'll see all of her cool designs. And I can't get it back in my ear. Uh, they are really pretty. I bought two pairs, one for me and one for a friend that I'm going to give her for Christmas. So, And I wanted you guys to know who this is because if you guys did see me at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival or Garden State Sheep Breeders Festival, I always say the wrong name. I think every one of us does. Uh, I probably had 50 people ask me about my earrings. <laughs> That's not a joke. I probably should send uh, Yasmin a message and tell her like she just needs to have a couple people walking around a festival and she will sell tons of these. <laughs> so yeah, check her out. Designs by uh, Designs by Yasmin on Instagram. Okay, so that's it. That was my recap. I just wanted to quick share with you guys so many other cool vendors that I could definitely tell you about, but I just wanted to pick two. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> Forgot. Uh, I'm wearing my necklace that Chevy Rail made for me. I showed this off to you guys um, last episode. So I just wanted to let you know that her shop is up and running. Uh, definitely go visit Chevy Rail dot com or no chevyrellstuff.com and you will be able to see her uh, necklaces uh, stitch markers if you follow her on instagram at chevyrell she has a link tree and that'll get you to her website too so go check her out they're so cool i feel a little bit i feel dull today dull are you getting that vibe a dull vibe for me Okay, so what's next? Shall I announce the giveaway from last week? Okay, let's do that. <laughs> last week I asked you guys to share, what did I ask you to share? Oh, I asked you to share what you like about the YouTube channels that you follow and what makes you kind of continually go back to them. And some of your answers, well, all of your answers were great, thank you all of you who answered. Um, some of your answers though had me laughing. Some of them had me very intrigued. <laughs> there was one answer about YouTube videos about braiding horse manes. There's a video for everything, you know. So the winner is Tina Kircher. And her comment says, I love seeing you on YouTube. Thanks, Tina. <laughs> Besides knitting and yarny channels, I watch a few people who do mudlarking on the Thames. Finding vintage and antique things that wash up during low tide. I love old junk and it is interesting to see what survives. Mudlarking? Mudlarking? Mudlarking. <laughs> who knew? Uh, that does sound pretty cool though. I grew up uh, here in New Jersey. I grew up on the Shark River and as a kid, which I guess kids today probably wouldn't be allowed to do this, but me, my brother, and all of our friends from our neighborhood, we played in the woods at the edge of the river. So we had all kinds of cool things that would wash up on our little beach. So yeah, I can see how that could be a really cool YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Uh, so Tina, even if you don't see this, you don't even need to contact me because Tina also offered to knit a sample for the shop. I have her address already. I will be mailing her yarn next week for the sample. 
So I will just put her prize in there. Did is her prize here? No, I brought the prizes back to the shop. Didn't oh no, they're right here. So Tina's prize is Oh, crinkly. This one. This is for Tina. The one can't give away. Oh, congratulations, Tina. Oh, sorry for the crinkling, crinkling, crinkling. I'm going to put them back in their spot. So, yes, Tina is making a sample for the shop. Guys, so I guess if I say it out loud on the YouTubes, you guys make it happen. Because I think I have eight people signed up or 12. Well, definite, we have eight. There's like 12. We still have to confirm what's happening. But that many people are making samples for my shop. You guys, that's really like, I don't know how to explain to you how cool that is because it's just one less thing that I have to think about. And it's amazing that you guys want to do that. Some of the makes you guys chose are pretty epic too. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, sample knitting is always needed and always appreciated at frame and fiber. So if you ever feel like you want to, sorry, there was a fuzz. <laughs> if you ever want to knit a sample for the shop, you can visit uh, friends of frame and fiber, the group page on Ravelry. And at the top of the group page, there's tabs. One tab says pages. You can click on that. And there is a page that says samples and patterns. I think that's the name of it. And then I list all kinds of patterns that I think would be cool to have in the shop with the yarns that I sell. So check that out if you would like to. Okay, I think that's everything, right? Giveaway, New Jersey Sheep and Wool. Yes. All right, let's move on to my makes. No, that's not all. I'm gonna do makes at the very end because there's not that many. This next little bit, this next segment is going to be a review. Uh, finally reviewing the Yarn Swift made by Wolves of Whimsy, uh, Randy and Michael Hurtado. They have sent me a Swift a few months back to um, use and review for them. And so I have that all ready to go. I took some footage to share with you today about this Amish Swift made by Michael Hurtado. Uh, he and his wife Randy have a business called Wools of Whimsy. You can find them on Etsy at that name. I will link below to their Etsy shop. Uh, this is their design. This is the Amish Swift. They also make yarn bowls and Randy sells her hand knits. So check out their, their uh, Etsy shop. I met Randy and Michael, AKA Mr. Randy, at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival last year. And they are lovely, kind, joyful, full of laughter people. Uh, absolutely love when I get to run into them at festivals and just all the yarny places. So I wanna show this to you. They sent this with to me a couple of months ago and I've been dying to do a video so you guys can see their swift uh, if you're in the market for a swift i would definitely recommend this one it is worth every penny uh, mr randy has different colors he can do for you too uh, so he makes this all himself and it's pretty clever i took a video of me using this which i will insert at some point during this video uh spinning or winding a ball of yarn. Um, this is my custom colorway for 2019 from Legacy Fiber Arts. It is called Sea Urchin and it comes on their steel toe, cozy toes, and DK base. So if you need to get your hands on any of this, I do have some of this available still, uh, but stay tuned and you'll see how this Swift winds this yarn into a ball. <laughs> okay, so first, these little pegs here hold the yarn really securely. Um, I've got here, let me take it apart so you can see it. And it stores really clever too. So you've got your, it's not a wing nut, it's a wing screw. I don't know what this one's called. Maybe I'll look it up. If I can look it up, 
I'll correct myself. Okay, so this is what holds the, I don't know if it's gonna work, but this is what holds the um, Swift together. That's what it spins on. And the bottom has felt. And so the felt glides, I mean, absolutely glides on this base. Um, it was really easy to use. Oh, did I drop it? Um, Mr. Randy signs and numbers them on the back. Let's see, yeah. And everything just fits so perfectly. Uh, when he when it comes to you, it's it's disassembled and it's really easy to assemble. They send you um, a sheet uh, for information on how to assemble it. But he just makes it so easy, it's kind of dummy proof. Um, right here you'll see those little dots so you know which way your swift arms are supposed to connect. Uh, and everything comes out, so you'll see here too that there is uh, peg holes for these pegs. So if you have a smaller skein, I'm sorry, <laughs> if you have a smaller skein, you can put tension on your hank of yarn and they fit in here snugly. Like you're not gonna have to worry about these flying off while you're spinning. They fit quite snugly. Snugly, snugly? I wouldn't snuggle with them. <laughs> they just, they fit snugly. Uh, and, and they're pretty. I think they're really pretty. So this is how it stores. It's a really compact. So it's pretty neat. It's pretty small and it's really easy to work with great swift so check out the spinning action and just how smoothly it works um like i said check them out at wools of whimsy on etsy and mike and randy thank you so much for the swift i will be getting lots of use out of this it'll be spinning constantly here at the shop <laughs> so thanks guys and check them out a lovely Swift. If you're in the market, definitely check them out. Wools of Whimsy on Inst on Etsy. Um, it does, those Swifts come in four colors. There's the color that you saw, which is Barn Red. There's Cognac, Black Cherry, and Natural. They are beautiful. Um, I can't really say too much. I think I said enough in the video, but very well made, very well constructed. When I say it's smooth, it glides, it is so lovely. It's quieter than my other Swift that is like industrial made. <laughs> it's lovely. So, and they're very reasonably priced. Um, I definitely recommend getting in touch with Wools of Whimsy. They do have their Etsy shop up and there are some Swifts available there. So, yeah, that was it. That was the review. I did a review. <laughs> I can't recommend them higher. Can't recommend them more highly. More highly recommend them. English is my first language. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to my makes. Finally on to makes. I have all small things to share with you. Nothing big. Uh, so first is a work in progress which I showed you a bit. I think I showed it to you. Maybe I didn't show it to you. It's my monster sock. Yes, I did. I talked to you about this in the last episode. Didn't I? Yes. 
I talked to you about this. I showed you what I was working on. So I am halfway done with my monster make along, which is cool because today's the 15th and the last day is the 30th. Haha, <laughs> look at that. And I am going to Maine for a knitting retreat at the end of this week. So I'll have plenty of time for knitting. So I will definitely get these finished. So this is my monster make along, monster sock make along. So it's taking your scraps and throwing them together and making a monster sock. Let's see here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oops, don't focus on me. Twelve. So that's twelve. And then this is gonna be the center. I'm gonna cut this one here and then Oh, one, two, three. So I have three, 12, I have nine more to go. Nine more scrappy sections to go. And then I will, I will pick up stitches in here. I will snip, 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 snip. And I will pick up and I will make my toes and then I'll cut in for my heels. So I think if I remember correctly, that's the center. So that's approximately where my heel will go. I'll measure before I actually do that. So it's going to be a pretty short sock, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, pretty cool, right? I love, I love using the scraps for socks. I love the way it looks. I actually have been putting these actually, I don't know why I just said it like that. Do you guys make fun of yourselves? I'm always making fun of myself. 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 Holy cow. Wait. Yeah, well. Uh, I think this would be a really cool wrist warmer or fingerless mitts. I wear fingerless mitts and wrist warmers every single day in the winter. So I think my next scrappy project is going to be some fingerless mitts. Also, Comment below, has your gauge and your t or your tension changed over the course of your knitting and crocheting career? Because I am knitting these on a size zero, which I have knitted, I don't know, two dozen pairs of socks on a size zero. And this pair for some reason, and it's the same 64 stitch, 64 stitches. So I haven't changed anything, but this is a lot tighter and a lot denser than what I normally make. It fits. I had my foot in it. Um, it is a little snug compared to the other socks that I have, which I kind of am digging. I'll let you know once the sock is actually finished and I've worn it, if I dig it. <laughs> but yeah, did my tension change? I think my tension changed. Does your ten tension change? change? I mean, I know it can change circumstantially because if we are really stressed out we're gonna have tighter stitches if we're super loosey-goosey or I don't know a couple drinks in us we most likely will have bigger stitches I have seen that in a project when I've worked normally and then hung out with friends drinking a couple drinks and knitting at the same time and having to rip back because it was a little bit loose but so yeah this is interesting these yarns are scraps, so they're not at all exactly the same. Um, they're all the same weight, but they're a little bit, well, no, they're not. They're a little bit different. They're all considered fingering weight. Let's put it that way. Uh, but you can see, at least I think you can see, how it's not, oh, you know how you can see? I'll show you how you can see. I will show you. Let's put a straight edge behind it. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my gosh, when I do that giggle, I sound so much like my mom. It's ridiculous. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Are we focused? Yes, we're focused. Okay. So you can see, right? That's not really straight. Like you can see this goes in a little bit. This comes out. That goes in. So I think that's just because the yarns are all a little bit off. Um, but... They're monster socks, yo. 
I've been calling them my Franken socks. And I think the difference between a monster sock and a Franken sock is a monster sock is scrappy, so it encompasses all of the monster socks. But a Franken sock is a sock that you're then going to cut and snip and change, kind of like, you know, Frankenstein was snipped. So, Franken sock. Good, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is. Oh, don't drop that. Oh, can I tell you? These, ouch, ouch. Where are they? These DPNs are weapons. Absolutely. I've, they went through my jeans. Yeah, I know. Bad news browns. Okay, I mean bears. Bad news, bad, bad news, bad news bears. Bad news bears. Bad news browns. Hmm. I forget which one it is. Okay, my next whip, which is, it's done. I'm no, I don't have to knit it anymore. It's blocking. I'm going to show you it to you blocking because it's so tiny. So this, he he he, <laughs> is a little pouch that I made. So I'm going to Maine next weekend with my friend Sharon to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. Oh! It's very fun. This is my third year going. I almost didn't get in because slacker me forgot to send my <sighs> deposit on time. Who does that? So we do a little, you know, a tiny little gift exchange when we get there. Nothing crazy. But we always knit, make something a little bit um, tiny so that we can trade. And so this year we knitted these tiny little... I guess it's called, well, it's not, I guess it, it is. It's called a business, it's a business card holder. I'll probably put some uh, little stitch markers or something in there from the shop. So this is a free pattern. Uh, do I remember the pattern name? No. Somewhere over there. I'll link it below if I can find it. Or when I find it. So, oh, there she is. Tiny little pouch. Really cute. I'm blocking it right now and I'm blocking it because I don't really I didn't really love knitting this little guy the pattern was meh it wasn't the best there was things that could have been done better but whatever it's it was a simple it took me like what 45 minutes to make this an hour um you know like it's just really basic knitting so the everything rolls and it's just meh but I have a really cute button to go on it. Oh, I forgot to bring the button in to show you. Oh, it's a pink button. And I'm going to put stitch markers in it. Wow, I don't know why I bothered sharing that with you because I gave you absolutely no information. Don't know the pattern. Don't know the yarn. <laughs> Can't find the button. So, that's done blocking I'll sew the button on tomorrow and put the stitch markers in which might be these little stitch markers I picked these up New Jersey sheep and wool with my main retreat in mind yep they're little lobsters because <laughs> we're going to Maine so I have to get lobster lobster stitch markers okay my final make which I also, I don't know if I should show this just in case, but should I show this? Maybe I shouldn't show this. Maybe I will take a picture of this. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to show that because I don't want to ruin the surprise. It's a present. And just in case the recipient watches this, I doubt she watches this. But just in case so I will take a picture of this because I need to mail it I need to get it in the mail this week before I go to Maine I'll take a picture of it and I'll show it to you when I know she's had it it's so cute ah! so really now there's absolutely nothing else to show you <laughs> I wanted to show you my second sleeve of my body cardigan but I drip it out because I was out with friends 
having a cocktail and I just kept right on knitting past all of the decreases. <laughs> so I had to rip it out and I will. So no sleeve to show you. That's it kids. That's all I have for this one. So until next time, happy making and I will, I'll catch up with you later. Follow me on Instagram if you would like to see what's happening during the week. Until we meet again, I am Paige the Framer on Instagram or frame.and.fiber, both of those places on Instagram. Bye guys. <laughs>